Patrick Johansson, President, Market Area Europe, Middle East and Africa at Ericsson. It's always a great pleasure to have you here with us at Economy Middle East. Thank you very much for having me. Now, across EMEA, you work with markets at very different stages of 5G maturity, which has proven successful from Europe or Africa. Can Gulf operators adopt to move beyond basic coverage and monetize services such as AR, VR, industrial automation, and fixed wireless access? Of course, we uh, work with a very, very broad geography uh, across EMEA, and uh, we have all types of markets, as you uh, rightly mentioned. But I don't think we should only start there. It is actually what we can learn from, from all parts of the world, because different uh, operators across the world have decided on different approaches. And if we take uh, certain parts of, of Europe, for instance, when we talk about uh, fixed wireless access, yes, there we have um, uh, some couple of good examples, whether that is through rural coverage, but also uh, replacing uh, fiber in, um, in certain areas where you have younger populations, for instance, are being more mobile. They don't want to wait for a connection and so forth. I think some of that we can uh, put into here uh, as well in, in UAE. But we also have one of the most advanced markets for fixed wireless access here, right in the Middle East. And that's in Oman, where we have the majority of the network uh, load actually delivering fixed uh, wireless access services. Then you also mentioned a, a lot of other um, advancements. And, um, and there I believe that we actually uh, are a little bit in the forefront here in, um, in the Middle East as well, where we have both companies like uh, E-AND and STC being on the front edge of, of what we do with technology and from applied AI, for instance. Having said that, there are always areas to work with, whether it's how we commercialize these new uh, opportunities. And then, of course, I cannot um, answer this question without mentioning APIs. That's another very, very important uh, uh, landmark that we're doing with the Aduna collaboration, uh, providing APIs for operators to build on new revenue streams uh, based on this global platform that, uh, that it is provided. And how is Ericsson helping carriers reposition the network itself through AI slicing or tiered quality as a value platform that can sustain new predictable revenue streams? Yeah, and this ties back a little bit to what I said in the previous uh, comment. And it is very much about the concept that we call differentiated uh, connectivity. And that means that we use true 5G or 5G standalone as the basis for that, where we can have different packages, can be focusing on speed, it can be focused on latency, uh, reach, availability. Uh, and we have uh, um, something that we showcase here called moments, because in different parts of the society, in, in our personal lives, we need different connectivity, where it's where we, uh, for instance, uh, attend a, a sports event where we want to share that with our friends, uh, do a very good uplink quality, or it will be when we're actually buying uh, some soft drink uh, at a convenience stand and where that vendor also wants to get paid. So there are a lot of different practical applications where we now through slicing can offer this uh, to the consumers. And of course, uh, studies that we do uh, to, by ourselves and also externally is showing that the uh, willingness to pay for these extra services are actually very, very high. People are not happy with good enough anymore. They want to make sure that they get what they want when they want it. Energy efficiency and security are now national priorities. What concrete reductions in power use and cyber risk do, you, do your newest radio and RAN compute solutions deliver? And how does the progress align with Saudi Vision 2030 and we, the UAE, 2031? If I start on, on the last part, uh, it's perfectly aligned because I think we're coming together now, uh, whether it is uh, governments and private enterprises to see what is truly important. And, we have very, very good alignment. It is very much about full sustainability, energy efficiency, and that is both on the radio side and the compute. And by each generation that comes out, we deliver uh, very, very high efficiencies. And compared to some of the other uh, solutions that are around, uh, like ARN, for instance, we do have better energy efficiency with the uh, on-prem solutions that we have through our compute uh, network that we have. But uh, you also touched upon security, and of course, we live in a very, very uh, difficult time where we have a lot of challenges from a geopolitical point of view, where uh, security across the networks, um, where it's public or uh, private networks are super critical. And uh, security has always been very, very close at heart for Ericsson. And uh, we are very good positioned and work with both governments and with operators to make sure that information is protected and is kept where it's supposed to be. Digital transformation hinges on strong local ecosystem. What steps is Ericsson taking to cultivate developers 
cloud partners and academia in the Middle East, and which new collaborations will you spotlight at this year's JITEX? We have a lot of collaboration across because, of course, as you mentioned, it is the ecosystem, uh, whether that is from academia or from uh, other companies and with governments, that truly makes the digital transformation happening. And uh, I would like to start on the, on the, uh, the side of, of how we bring new people into the, uh, the ecosystem. We have great collaboration with EAND uh, through an Accelerate program, for instance. We have our own graduate programs and we're bringing some of them here to JITEX as well to showcase what this industry is all about. So it's that close collaboration and then building with new partners as the ecosystem develops. Because again, we have long-term long -term standing relationships, but now with the new applications, whether that is through Mission Critical and others, you need new partners. So that is constantly evolving, uh, both here locally in UAE, uh, across Middle East and globally. Patrick Hansen, as always, thank you for that wealth of information and thank you for joining us here at Economy News. Thank you very much and true honor to be here. Thank you.